Mercedes head of motorsport Toto Wolff has said that four-time F1 world champion Lewis Hamilton could race on for the Silver Arrows beyond his next contract, potentially taking him to the end of 2024 when he would be 39 years old. The Brits' current deal finishes at the end of this year, but Wolff says that Hamilton has the talent to go the distance. I think he, he, can, he can go another two contract terms uh, because he's at his best now, and we've seen that drivers like um, Schumacher or Alonso can, can carry on until her in the late, um, late 30s. Hamilton's next contract is said to be a formality, with just the terms to be finalized over the next few months. And a competitive drive likely, with Mercedes still the class of the field, the squad winning the 2018 Laureus Award for Team of the Year on the back of four straight world titles. We are talking with each other. We, this is, um, he's at the, at the top of his career and uh, we are, it is clear that we want to continue with Lewis and he wants to continue with us. He's the best driver and the best team. So it is, uh, it is a true win-win um, situation. F1's team principals are up in arms about a drop in payments for the 2017 season. The first under new owner Liberty Media, with squads collectively receiving 47 million US dollars less than the previous year. Liberty Media has had to invest heavily since its arrival at the end of 2016 in bringing F1 up to standards in the post-Bernie Eccleston era. Um, it is a more complicated world, more competitive world. Um, and really, it was a one-man show in the past. Yep. And I just don't think a one-man show can pursue and develop the opportunities. F1 has invested in a new London headquarters and increased its headcount, which is hoped to reach 150 people this year. The changes are designed to promote and grow the sport more effectively, both long-term objectives for F1. One of our goals is to make, you know, the, you know, not just make the sport more competitive and the action better, but to make the sport healthier for everybody. I mean, today, what some of the teams spend to put up, spending half a billion dollars a year to put a team on the track, you know, it just doesn't make sense. Revenue, though, dropped by 12 million US dollars last year, with the reduction in the number of events from 21 to 20, the Brazilian GP getting a cut price deal, and the loss of sponsors Allianz and UBS. Renault has set a deadline of May for customer squad Red Bull Racing to make a decision on its 2019 power unit. The French mark is in the final year of its contract with Red Bull Racing, but must advise F1 governing body the FIA, the teams it intends to supply for 2019 by May 15. And Renault Sport Racing Managing Director Cyril Abitable says the clock is ticking for Red Bull team principal Christian Horner to decide between it and a switch to Honda. We cannot wait forever, Abitable said. I know that Christian has said he has options, and he is absolutely right. Renault has already partnered with rival McLaren for the next three years, despite the threat of having its works team outshined. Ferrari is preparing itself for a championship rematch with rival Mercedes, though the prancing horse is focused on playing the long game. The Scuderia hit the ground running last year, four-time F1 world champion Sebastian Vettel winning three of the first six races, but just two of the next 14, as the Silver Arrows built momentum. There's just one challenge, which is the final challenge. So that's work that you build. And you don't build that in one or two races. We've seen over the past few years, the last championships, that you work that work, race by race, and you always try to do the best you can. To close the gap to Mercedes, Ferrari has ensured its evolution, not revolution, on the technical front. The SF71H featuring a longer wheelbase, but retaining its overall aerodynamic concept from last year. As regards to aerodynamics, going on what we did last year, we maintained our concept of having the inlets of the radiators. 
And everybody's copying that. But we tried to make an additional step forward. And what we show today is not the same element of last year, but it is something more developed. The sound of F1 could soon be more than just the roar of a power unit at racing speed. With the sport commissioning the fast and the furious composer Brian Tyler to write the sport's official theme music. Tyler created the theme tune for ESPN's NFL coverage and announced his new gig on Twitter. What an honor to be chosen to compose the Formula One theme, Tyler tweeted. This is a lifelong dream come true, as I am a massive Formula One fan. Thank you, F1. TheInsideLine.com, for everything Formula One.